18. Say in the old church, this may be my last time. I don't know. Thank you all the blessing while I have a chance. First Kings 18. We brought a praise with you. You ought to get it out. That everything. It hath breath, praise. Praise the Lord. Verse 30, verse 30. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. of the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord and he made a trench around the altar as great as it would contain two measure of seeds and he said do it a second time and they did it the second time. And he said, do it the third time. And they did it the third time. And the Lord ran around the altar. And he filled the trench also with water. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art the God in Israel and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces, and they said, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Thus, in the reading of the text, the flower is flading, the grass certainly is going to wither, uh, but my Lord's word shall not return unto him, him void. Verse 30 says again, And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. I want to tag this text for a few minutes and talk about it. it is time to rebuild the altar. It is time to rebuild the altar. Pray with me, please. Thank you, Rest as you may be seated. Many they are who would agree with the preacher that in these times in which we live, it seems as though if we have lost our moral compass when we look at the times in which we live it appears that God is an afterthought instead of being preeminent in our lives when we look at the times in which we live Insulting one is a sign of strength. 
apologizing is viewed as a sign of weakness. In this day and time in which we live, criminal activity is praised. And those who would turn the other cheek are considered to be soft. If you would just take a little time and, and look at the times in which we live, you have to almost wonder where is God? day is gone when we would consider him first now we consider him in crisis times we see him as only being a God who has power to rescue us from perishing living in this time we see the malicious attacks that are placed upon the weak by the strong the rich is getting richer and if it was possible the poor is becoming poor the have nots are getting more and the haves are getting more and the have nots are losing what they have this day and time in which we live you can be working a good paying job and yet have nowhere to lay your head it's almost as if you really look and sense and try to feel the spirit of God and it's almost as if it's a dry spell that have moved across the land whereby men have hijacked pulpits and the ministries to preach and teach their own gospel and it appears as if men and women are flocking there as Paul told Timothy that the day would come that men would not endure sound doctrine. They would not endure a preacher who would stand flat footed and preach the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. He's got to have some kind of entertainment air about him. He, has to have some kind of trick to offer because men don't want to hear sound doctrine. Say, but they would give their selves because they have itching ears to tales and fables told by others. It, it almost appears that the church has been hijacked by people with hidden agendas in the name of Jesus. They're lining up folk, but the road they're on is not the straight and the narrow. It is the one that leads to destruction. There was a day when one would come in the house of God. One would come reverently before the throne of grace. But now we just come early, come late, leave early on our way somewhere else. If you look at America, it appears we've lost our moral compass. And there was a day when folk would sin and it would bother them. But now it appears that sinning is fun. And so I want to have fun. I don't want to hear nobody uh, telling me what God said. I'm going to do my own thing. And, and so we wonder, we wonder what is the solution to the problem. Well, my brothers and my sisters, I, I want you to first of all look at the condition of the altar. There was a day when every house had an altar because in that house there was at least a praying mother and in some houses it was a praying father but if he was missing there was a praying mother in other houses there was a praying grandmama y'all gonna help me here uh, but whatever house you were in somebody called on the name of the lord it used to be that sunday school was not optional it was not an elective. Sunday morning, you knew what you were doing. It was not fishing, not frolicking on the beach. On Sunday morning, you were going to be in the Lord's house. Have I got a witness here? Whether you ironed that shirt Saturday night or wore it wrinkled Sunday morning, you were going to church. It used to be that we had an altar in the house and people would pray 
and, and ask God to help them and let the children hear them praying. They would pray over the food. They would pray before the trip. They would pray while the children were at the house. Somebody prayed for us. It used to be that we had an altar in our houses. It was careful screening or programming that came in the house. You just couldn't watch any show. Y'all gonna help me here. You just couldn't watch any show on TV because mama and them made sure that you didn't watch stuff that was gonna lead you the wrong way. Y'all gonna talk to me? And, and, and they, and, and now, and now, yeah, yeah, you don't have to have a TV. All you got to do is have a smartphone and you can watch any and everything and all this garbage in only brings garbage back out. We, we don't have time for God because we've created all these other gods. Some of us are so egocentric, fixated, we're stuck on ourselves. And in our little narcissistic ways, we think we all that and a bag of chips. I want you to look at the condition of the altar. We are whining about they took prayer out of school. I think you're crying about the wrong thing. They didn't take prayer out of school. They took prayers out of school. Y'all gonna help me here? Because there was a day we had praying teachers. I thought I had some here. We had praying principals. We had praying folk walking the hall, cooking our food, cutting our glass, driving our bus, and now everybody seemingly is running a paycheck. Y'all gonna talk to me? And it, it, they didn't take prayer out of school. It's not the school's responsibility to pray. Prayer ought to start at home. Prayer ought to start in the house that you come from. What's happening is the folk that's coming from these houses don't know how to pray. Because you ain't can't tell me the legislators can legislate me calling on Jesus. I call on the Lord any and everywhere. All oh, y'all gonna talk to me here. I call on him in Walmart. I call on him in the courthouse. I call on him in the hospital. I call on the Lord everywhere. So you can't tell me they took prayer out of school. They took prayers out of the houses look at the condition of the altar kids don't see us on our knees praying for them they hear foul vile and vicious language in our houses now our parents curse like these parents cuss I wish I had a witness here. But they didn't cuss around us. They didn't cuss us out. They didn't call us out of Anybody going to help me here? Look at the condition of the altar today. And if you decide to stand up and raise your child in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord, you're called a holy roller. Do I have a witness here? If, if your children say, yes, ma'am, and no ma'am and yes sir and no sir they call a uncle tom it's called respect i thought i had somebody here i don't care what color you are what country you come from if you're older than i am you deserve respect it's yes ma'am it's no ma'am it's yes sir it's no sir y'all gonna talk to me and now we got two-year-old cussing folk out and giving them fingers and all this kind of stuff is something wrong with the compass of our morality You look at you look at the condition the condition of the altar it, it used to be God was was in the forefront we didn't start nothing without him wherever we were we started with a word of prayer and now you got to go all the way to the Supreme Court in some places where you want to call on the name of the Lord but They'll lock you up and vilify you for burning a flag or kneeling when they playing the national anthem. But you can't call on the name of God. Look at the condition of the altar. The altar, America needs to recall all of her currency and do a reprinting and take that lie off the back. Come on, help me out here for a minute because she ain't trusting in God. She's not concerned about God. Matter of fact, her money has become her God. Her position has become her God. Wherever she is, where she can rape and take advantage of other people, they ain't just started taking families away from families. Come on, talk to me here. They ain't just started using cheap labor. They've been doing it. Y'all gonna help me here? The altar has been altered. 
And it's time to look at. The, oh, listen, can I tell you something? Your communities are no better than the folk that live in them. And, 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 and the land is going to stay vile until we take control of our houses and turn them back into homes. See, when I was growing up, they didn't go to no city council and talk about we need y'all to pass a curfew. He, curfew was like this in our house. Don't let dog catch you. I thought I had somebody who helped me. Don't let dog catch you out of this house. Now, I know some of y'all say it was a street light. I live where there wasn't no street light. It was if you if you let dog caught you out the house, a truant officer didn't come looking for you. The popo didn't arrest you. It went something like this. Larry! And you knew when that name was called that way. You just might well came on home with switching hands. The altar has been altered. Now we don't even know where our children are. And half of us don't care because as long as they ain't with us, we can do our thing. I mean, come on, walk with me for a minute. You can't expect teachers to work a miracle in 180 days. You send them disrespectful students. They get substandard pay. And you expect them to do with yours what you can't do with 365 days. The altar has been. It's been altered. We got children raising children, raising children. No parenting skills. And then all the pressure of economic shortages upon these parents who are trying to raise children, not having enough this and not having enough of that. And, and, and all those pressures are there and, and nobody cares. Church becomes judgmental and because she has five children by five different men, something wrong with her. And she's not to be helped because she should have known better. Truth be told how you got here. I wish some of y'all walk with me for a minute. The altar has been altered. You tell children that you're going to tell their mama on them, they'll give you their phone say call them. She ain't going to do nothing. Matter of fact, you keep messing with me, she's going to do something to you. I just, I'm asking if you would for a minute. How hard is it just to be nice? We come here try to worship, but we can't worship because we roll our eyes at certain people and we don't like them and can't stand them. You can't get to God unless you get with me. The Bible said, how you going to love God whom you never seen, preach man, and then hate your brother that you have with you daily. You, look, I'm trying to free myself of all hatred and, and let everybody go. I, I'm, I'm not dragging none of y'all with me. You don't like me, that's your problem. Y'all wish I had somebody in here. If I'm your enemy, that's your problem. I, I'm trying to see Jesus in order to see him. I've got to love everybody. Ain't no, ain't no ifs and buts about it. You, 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 look, you ain't impressing God because you up here trying to impress us. Because look, this is what God does. He doesn't look at what you got on. He don't really listen at what you're saying. He goes straight and look at your heart. 
And then we testify in here. We shock our neighbor. A lot of us that look angelic got hearts up black as a thousand midnights. And God knows that. And I wanted to call us together. Just like Elijah called Israel together up on Mount Carmel. The time is now for us to rebuild the altar. It, 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 is, in, it is in terrible condition. When you are the leader of the free world and you just attack people that don't bow down to you. That's not a democracy. That's a dictatorship. It's time. To honestly look at the condition of, of the altar. You can't go to football games safely no more. Because after the game, somebody may decide they just want to shoot everybody. Where, where, is, where is the value for human life? You can't go to the mall. You can't go to the movies because somebody decided they want to shoot a couple of police and then come in the park a lot and shoot as many innocent people as they can and then shoot it out with the police and die in a hell of bullets. And that's all right because the altar has been shifted. This is where we're living. This is the day. And we keep talking about we need more legislation to have better gun control. Let me tell you something. The folk that need controlling ain't shooting nobody. Folks that got guns, that got common sense, ain't walking around shooting folk. And the folk that you're trying to keep from getting guns already got guns. We live, it's almost get back to where we need Matt and Festus. I mean, come on, you went to the football game in Mobile just the other day to enjoy the game, and some little Negro come over there mad at another little Negro, shot up nine people. And nobody's alarmed. They want to blame the police. But they should have been there faster. They should have got the gun from him. They should have knew you had one. We ain't psychic. Maybe they had a mama or a daddy or uncle or brother or cousin or friend that saw something and said something. Because he ain't just pulled that gun out. He told four or five people, I'm going to shoot it up. But we are so dead to, the, to, to common sense until everybody trying to mind their own business and ain't nobody got no business and your business is going to be their business which is going to be the mortuary business. We're having to beg people, please slow down. Stop at the bus being let out. Letting children off precious cargo and you late for a latte at Starbucks. Where is the compassion? Where is anybody see any of this other than me that this altar has been altered? And and Israel had drifted off. Joan, she had she had gotten a weak king by the name of Ahab, who 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 married a girl by the name of Jezebel. The daughter of King of Zidonia, who were who was an idol god worshiper, and and when Ahab married her, she brought all of her gods and her makeup with her, and 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 Jezebel was running and ruining Ahab's kingship, so much so. Until Israel had become wicked. God allowed Elijah to step in Ahab's chamber and say, by my word, there shall be no rain and no dew upon the land. And Elijah disappears and 
and the, the, the land dries up. No rain. No dew upon the land. It, it, James tells us in his book it was about the space of three years and, and six months. And, and Elijah was the first one to suffer from the shortage because his brook dried up. And his bird didn't show up. And the Lord told him to get up, go see a widow down in Zarephath. And, and he said, now you got to go to Zarephath because the widows in Israel ain't going to feed you. Wasn't that, there wasn't no widows in Israel, but they ain't going to help you. He goes to a foreigner, and God finances their eating for the space of three years and six months. And now he's come out of hiding. And, and he, says, he says to Obadiah, go tell Ahab to meet me on karma. And, and Obadiah said, no, man, if I go in there, soon as I tell him that you're out, you're going to hide again. He said, no, no, it's time. It's time to meet up on the altar and on the mountain and decide whose side you own. It's so hard. It's so hard to be a witness for the Lord on Sunday when you're a witness for the world six days of the week. Come on, help me out here for a minute. See, holiness is not a denomination. It's a lifestyle. I say it's not a denomination. It's a lifestyle. And if you're trying to live the lifestyle, it ought to affect you on Monday just like it does on Sunday. Come on, talk to me. So you can't put on religion and take off religion. It's a relationship that we have to have with God. I mean, none of us are perfect, but it ought to bother when you're wrong. You ought not be able to sin and it don't trouble you. You ought not be able to commit sin and walk around with a swag. Like you got away with something. You ought to understand that you got a conscience. And if you lie, it ought to bother you. If you steal, it ought to bother you. If you stab somebody in the back, it ought to bother you. If you tell a lie on somebody without a cause, it ought to bother you. If you pick up somebody's home, it ought to bother you. If you cause somebody to lose their job, it ought to bother you. You talk about somebody just because you just don't like them. Don't know nothing about them. Just run that name in the mud. It ought to bother you. If you've been born again, it will bother you. But if you ain't been born again, it ain't going to bother you. We can just sit up in here unbothered. Can't nobody tell us what to do. We're grown and we're going to do our own thing. And we pick and choose our sermon like we do. It used to do on the rock cola. We punch F7. We don't like it. We don't listen to it. Come to challenge us today to let us understand that the cure for our problems is turning back to God. It is not getting 45 out the White House because you don't know who 46 is going to be. And, and 45 have set a whole nother benchmark and a whole nother level and there's somebody waiting in the wing. You, you don't know what, what 45 and a half thinking. And, and, and sometimes, you know, we, we want to trade stuff and, 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 and at least you know what you're dealing with. You know what you've got right now. You don't, you don't know what you're going to get in November 2020. The altar has been altered. The moral compass that used to always point toward God is now pointing toward what I want. And I've done wrong so long until wrong has become right, and it's the standard now. And so if I do right according to the word of God, I'm old-fashioned, I'm out of step. I'm trying to hold folk back. I'm attacking people. I'm disrespecting people. folk. I don't have no respect for folk. But I can come to tell you, we can't change what he said. There's no court that can change what he said. And, and so Elijah said, tell the people, meet me on, on Mount Carmel. And so they get up on Mount Carmel. And the first thing Ahab says to Elijah, you are the one who's been troubling Israel, you're a troublemaker. See, some of y'all looking at me this morning like I'm a troublemaker. Well, I've come to make some trouble today. I, I've come to get us to look at the condition of the altar that is missing in our lives. And 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 and, and Elijah said, No, man, I'm not the one, you're the one. Because, first of all, you can't control your house. Now you're trying to be king. 
but you're trying to be king of Israel with gods from Zidonia. You can't come here on Sunday morning and claim to be a part of God, but you reach a horoscope and it changes your day. I'm trying to preach in here. You can't claim to belong to God and your strongest hustle is in the world. Preach, Larry. The altar has been altered. And we have adjusted what's right and what's wrong to make us comfortable. And, and, and Elijah said, no, I'm not the one. You're the one. He said, but listen, it's time to settle this. It's time to let the folk decide. See, you've you got to stop allowing what come from 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue dictate how you respond to life. How is it that you're more concerned about a tweet than you are the word? You more concerned about somebody who's mortal than somebody who is immortal. I mean, God's going to live forever. Don J. Trump, just like you and I, going to find himself in some four by six one of these days. I don't care how elaborate it be, it's going to be the same size. All men shall die. And until we recognize this, that God is still in control. He's still in control. And so Elijah said, look, I tell you what we do. We're going to settle this here. He said, uh, if Baal be God, we'll serve Baal. And if God be God, we'll serve God. Here's the test. The God who answers by fire he shall be considered God people said that's fine with us then Elijah says to the prophets of Baal 450 of them he said tell y'all what we're going to do y'all go first anybody going to help me and and Bible said from the morning to the evening Sacrifice. They call on their God. Baal. Oh, Baal. Hear us while we pray. Man, about the noon time sacrifice, Elijah said to them, Y'all need to call him maybe a, a little louder. It might be hard to hear. I thought somebody read the text. So you need to call him a little louder. He may be on vacation. Might need to call him a little loud. He may be indisposed right now. And they, they start cutting themselves then and 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 letting blood gush out and 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 see people before they accept God, they'll start mutilating their own bodies and 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 trying to get higher and higher. Keep telling young folk that the vaping is killing folk, and you say, I ain't smoking, I'm vaping, but it's still killing folk. And 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 you still, I can do what I want to do, and we got to keep trying to save you. And you keep running headlong into all of this destruction, calling on Baal because Baal is going to be your God, Twitter is your God, Snapchat is your God, TikTok is your God, Facebook, if y'all going to talk to me, is your God. You go to, uh, to Facebook, and that's your counseling session, and post all your your business on Facebook instead of having a little talk with Jesus in your secret closet so he can solve your problem and help you bear your burdens in the heat of the day. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me here. We must rather get down on the Facebook and on Snapchat and talk about how bad things are. Look, I things are bad for me too, but you ain't gonna never know it. But I'm going in my secret closet. I'm gonna have a little talk with Jesus. I'm gonna tell him all about my troubles. And I come to be a witness that God will and God can. He can turn it on. 
Don't talk to me for a minute. The stuff you trying to pull ain't working. It didn't help the rabbit while you carrying the foot. Much break a mirror, got seven years of bad luck. Just don't cut yourself. Come on, black cat cross the pad, got bad luck. He better be a quick cat. And I ain't been to wreck my vehicle trying to save no cat. He better be moving. And I ain't been to back up, turn around, go the other way. I'm going on where I'm going. I walk on the ladder. I step on the crack. Y'all ain't talking to me in here. I do it all because it has no power over me if I'm a child of God. Jesus said in that day you can take up serpents and drink poison and it won't kill you. Some of y'all don't know what you're eating, what you're drinking. God has taken care of you while folk were trying to take you out. God has protected you. They call on bail, they call on bail, they call on bail, 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 bail. And they're calling on bail today. Listen at the music. It's just getting worse and worse and worse and worse. It used to be you could understand what they were talking about because the song had words. But now, all they got to do is have the right beat. And the more X-rated it is, the more popular. Gone is the day when we had four or five guys all having simultaneous steps. And stuff like, I got sunshine on a cloudy day. When it's cold outside. I got the month of May. I guess you. Go! Now, you can't play that stuff over the airways. But, Pastor, you are on because you're attacking our music. No, I'm not attacking your music. I'm trying to show you that your music is satanic in origin. I didn't come to be popular today. I came to preach. They call on bail. Used to get high on marijuana. Now it's opiates and this and it's that. And it used to be Jack and Coke. And it's it just keep on mixing drinks because you'll never get high enough to solve all your problems because when you sober up, they still there. But if you go to a problem solver, That's why the lyrics say, I must tell Jesus. Did y'all hear what I said? I must tell, not Facebook, not Twitter, not Snapchat. I must tell Jesus, not Instagram. I must tell Jesus. All of my struggles, Jesus can help me. So it was in the evening, evening sacrifice now has come. And that brings me to my second point, the constructing of the altar. Now, they had been calling Baal on an altar. And Elijah did not use the same altar that they used to call Baal. There was an altar already on Carmel, Fred, that had been abandoned. And broken down. So the Bible said. Elijah repaired. The altar. He took 12 stones. Representing the 12 tribes of. Of Israel. He put wood on. The altar. And then he does something very. Very strange. He asked them to dig a trench around. Around the altar. Now, mind you, it hadn't rained for three years and about six months. But they find barrels of water. 
Elijah said, so that you won't feel that it's going to be no sleight of hand. That somehow I'll have some smoking mirrors. He said, pour the water on the altar. The Bible said they poured it on the first time. And then he told them to do it again. They poured it on the altar the second time. And he said, do it one more time. The Bible said that they poured the water on the altar for the third time. I don't know, but I got a sneaky suspicion. They poured it one for the father. One time for the Son. And uh, one time for the Holy Ghost. Twelve stones uh, representing the twelve tribes. Three barrels of water representing the Godhead. Now that the altar is drenched in water, the trench is filled with water. The wood is wet. And uh, your yes, Lord, I Elijah said, now I let y'all call on your God. I let you call on him from the morning to the evening sacrifice. If y'all don't mind, and let me call on my God. And that's all I want to tell y'all today. If we're going to rebuild the altar, you got to get on your knees sometime and call on the name of the Lord. The Bible said that uh, he opened up uh, his plan by saying the God uh, of Abraham, uh, Isaac, and Jacob, uh, I want you to hear me, yeah, Lord, uh, and let the people know that you're willing uh, to forgive them uh, and turn uh, their hearts back to you. You ought to have been there when Elijah called up heaven uh, and said, God, uh, I need you to send down fire. Do y'all hear me? Mind you now, the trench is filled with water. The wood is wet. Yeah, Lord. But the fire that Elijah is calling for is not coming from uh, no match, but it's coming from heaven uh, down to earth. Is it anybody in the room that know our God is a miracle worker? He can do what no other power can do. Lord have mercy. I, I say our God is a miracle worker. He can do what no other power can do. Yes Lord he can divide a red sea and people can walk around on dry ground. He can shake the ground and the walls of Jericho should fall. Do I know anybody in the room who's going to be over in the that God is a miracle worker. Well, Lord, he can let you go to sleep in the lion's den while the lions are at home and all night he'll watch over you and early the next morning you'll have a praise report that the Lord is a miracle worker. Can I get a witness in here that know he can let them put you in a furnace hotter than ever been and you can be walking around in the furnace because of the Lord is a miracle worker. He can meet you at a hundred years old and let you be a father of a child named Isaac because the Lord is a miracle worker. I thought I had some help in here this morning and know that King of Adam do me like Jesus. He like to say I need you to come on and answer by fire. You ought to be there up on Mount Carmel. I said you ought to be there because the people now began to look and look around Lord to come fire with Lord from heaven I don't know was it lightning or was it an angel but the Lord set the altar on fire you ought to bring 
burn because the Bible says it burn up the red wood. It burn up all the water. He said it like this in the text. It licked up all the water. Can I do the witness here now? And that altar got set on fire. I need about five people in the house who can say I went to church last night and my heart wasn't right. But something got a hold of me. Hey! Isn't anybody in here have come to church before burning down? But the